My name is Mitchell Krogman, and I just want to say uh, you bring a, you talk about raising the minimum wage to fifteen dollars, right? Yes. Say, what would you say to the people who say that it can't be done or shouldn't be done? Good. What would you say to them? This is what I would say, and thank you very much, Mitchell, for the question. Implicit in everything that I have said is a little bit of an understanding of history of how things happen. Okay. If I was standing here with you 40 years ago, and I said, mm, I think that the United States will become mature enough racially that in the year 2008, an African American will be elected president of the United States. If I said that 40 years ago, people in this room would have said, you are nuts. <laughs> See, you're young, and you don't know that. You take it for granted. Now, I'm not here with you. You like Obama, you don't like Obama, that's not the point. And by the way, Iowa played a huge role in that. But that happened, that happened because millions of people for decades, it wasn't just Martin Luther King Jr., was millions of people said, we are gonna end racism and segregation. And obviously, we still have a long way to go. When we talk about women's rights and women's struggles, when I was mayor of Burling, this is back in the mid-1980s, we appointed, you're ready for this, pretty radical, a woman police officer. Whoa! <laughs> How wild and crazy can you be? And you're laughing. And it's good that you're laughing. Because now, it's a non-issue. It wasn't a non-issue in the 1980s. That people with disabilities are now mainstreamed into public schools you take for granted didn't happen by accident. If we were sitting here 10 years ago, not 40 years ago, and somebody said, well, you know, I think gay marriage will be legal in every state in the country, and the overwhelming majority of young people will be supportive, somebody here would have told me, you're crazy. That's what's happened. Why do I say all of those things? Because that is how change occurs, Mitchell. It change occurs from the bottom on up. Give you five years ago, if I stood before you and I said, I believe in a $15 an hour minimum wage, you would have said, whoa, pretty crazy stuff, Bernie. Well, you know what happened? Because people in the fast food industry and elsewhere went out on strike. And I met with those people and I've marched with those people. And they said, you know what, we can't make it on seven and a quarter, or eight or nine bucks an hour. And the American people said, yeah, we understand that. And what happened is Seattle and Los Angeles and San Francisco and other communities began to raise the minimum wage up to 15 bucks an hour over the next few years. That's how change comes. So I have not the slightest doubt that when millions of people stand up and say loudly and clearly that a minimum wage has got to be a living wage, yes, we will achieve that goal. Hello, Senator Sanders. My name is Noah Tang, and I'm a future educator. I taught, a uh, student taught in Chicago Public Schools last summer, and I, um, many of the eighth graders I taught English to were reading and learning at a third grade level. Um, what are you going to do to help the uh, underprivileged and um, just disadvantaged students in schools achieve their dreams of going to college? Well, Noah, first of all, thank you very much for going into education. <laughs> and when we talk about the political revolution, one of the things we are talking about is changing our national priorities. And I'm a big football, I know in Iowa football is a big deal, got it. <laughs> we in New England also watch the Patriots occasionally, okay? <laughs> but you know what? Tom Brady is a great American hero. You are more of an American hero than Tom Brady is. <laughs> and I want us as a nation, I want us as a nation to understand that education and enhancing our educational system and our intellects, that is a lifelong pursuit. And that starts with having a first-class childcare and pre-K system. It starts by making sure we adequately fund 
public education, and we attract the best teachers that we can. And it includes making public colleges and universities tuition free. I want to see a cultural revolution so that kids in Chicago and in Burlington, Vermont, understand that it is cool, really cool to be reading and thinking and talking about ideas. So to answer your question, Noah, maybe instead of giving tax breaks to billionaires, we adequately fund education from, education from childcare through higher education. Okay, where's the mic? We got a mic over there somewhere? Yeah. It's an honor to be here, uh, hearing you speak. I drove here six hours Whoa. from Springfield, Thank Illinois. You. And if you remember at the Democratic debate, I was the guy, as you were getting in the car, you were in the car, and I reach in, and I say, here's a yarmulke that says Bernie Sanders in Hebrew and English. Uh, the, 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 the reason I came up here is something that happened just two days ago. Uh, and I want to talk about the ethics, I want to talk about the ethics of the press, and in particular of Associated Press. And I want to out them here and now. I was in a Hillary Clinton town hall in Urbandale, Iowa, and I talked about the Weed Out Hate Initiative, initiative uh, an idea that gets righteous people of this country to teach uh, and instruct people to weed out, to relate weeding the garden with rooting out hatred. Yes. And by the time the Associated Press got done with that article, weed out hate became her idea in response to what do Americans do uh, uh, in response to fear, and the, and the right-wing pr press played ping-pong with the left-wing press, and it was just, it was just a, uh, an unbelievable thing. Welcome hey. to my world. All right. <laughs> but, but this is... All right, uh, let, me, let, me just, okay. let me just deal with, because you're raising an important question that has to be raised, and something that I am very concerned about. I had hoped, truly, uh, that in this country, which has suffered, and we are certainly not unique in this, exists all over the world, the stain of racism for so many, many years. That what I see right now, and I'm seeing it uh, with the attacks against uh, Latinos and the undocumented in this country, I am seeing it in the last few days against the uh, Muslim community in this country. What I am seeing is Trump and other demagogues attempting to divide this country to force or try to get the American people to hate somebody because of their religion or because of their country of birth. That is disgusting, that is unacceptable, and as a nation, we must reject it. But this is the way that people have often won elections. Now, Donald Trump thinks that low wages in this country are just fine. I believe, he says, having a low minimum wage is not a bad thing for this country. Donald Trump believes that our wages are too high. Donald Trump believes that we should give huge tax breaks to billionaires. So while they get us to try to hate Muslims or Latinos, giving huge tax breaks to billionaires and not raising the minimum wage. Our job is to be smarter than that. Our job is to stand together and say, no, we're not going to fall for it. We're not going to hate Muslims. We're not going to hate Latinos. We're going to stand together as one people and create a country that works for all of us. Okay, Phil, you got a question? Okay, yeah. 
Senator Sanders, um, what's your personal take on um, public banks? As you know, North Dakota has the only public bank in the United States, yeah. and there's some students, um, one I know of, who has a 3% interest rate on their student loans and everything, and plus public banks can also help build up our infrastructure and education, our roads and bridges. What's your I take on that? I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea, and I think states like Vermont uh, can look to North Dakota, uh, which has had that bank since the 1920s, I believe. Is that right? started by the populist movement way back when. And it's what they do there is public money, tax money and so forth, that goes into the bank, and then they reinvest that money to make their economy stronger and to protect the interests of their own people. I think it is a very smart idea, and I support the idea. Okay, a couple of more questions. Where's the, where's the mic? Okay, good. Uh, my name is Joyce Lewis. I love you forever. <laughs> and I want to know, are you going to help Amtrak by chance? Absolutely. Look. When we talk about climate change and when we talk about energy efficiency, it's not only making our buildings more energy efficient, it's also taking a very hard look at the transportation system, which uses huge amounts of energy. Our rail system today, both in terms of passenger rail and cargo, is way behind Europe, Japan, and even China in some instances. So yes, we have got to invest in our rail system, move cargo much more energy efficiently than is currently the case, and move passengers as well. Yeah, I believe very much uh, in Amtrak. You're welcome. All right, maybe last question. All right. Okay, I think the question is to make sure that U.S. foreign aid is used to help the people. Is that your question? That's right. Okay. You know, there was a time, you know, we, we do spend a lot of money abroad. Uh, too often what we're doing is propping up militaries and we're selling a lot of military equipment. Uh, I would like to see us be the country known around the world where when kids get an education or when they get health care, they can thank the people of the United States for improving their lives. So I, I agree with what you said. All right, let me just again thank all of you for uh, coming out uh, today. Uh, thank you for your help in this campaign and welcome to the political revolution. Thank you. Thank you.